New House, Old Soul. It's all about how to build a house with character and a narrative and a story and a soul. How to build a house today that isn't just like every other house in the block. How do you do that? Original series hosted by Brent Hall, New House, Old Soul, sponsored by Stellar Floors and the Unico System. About 20 years ago, Russell Versace, an architect, wrote a book called The New Old House. Traditional architects and classical architects have been building this way for a number of years now because they look at the past and they go, oh, those houses are so awesome, they're so beautiful, the craftsmanship so amazing. There are houses in our neighborhoods, there are houses in, in Fort Worth and Dallas that are just Awesome, Thistle Hill, the Baldridge House, right? Those are premium houses that were built with amazing materials, with amazing craft, and are still standing 110, 115 years later. So I look at the landscape of building in America today and I say, what should I be building? <laughs> And I look at it and I say, well, those are the best houses. Those are the houses with the best materials, the finest craftsmanship. They've lasted the longest. They're the best looking from the street. There's architectural details in there that are just awesome. That's what I want to copy. So this whole series is how to do that how to think about every component of the building, every component of the process. So that when we look at foundations, we look at framing, we look at the stonework, we look at the exterior cladding, we look at windows, we look at the interiors. We are going to be looking at it from this framework of what an old house would have. What is the soul of that old house that we can incorporate into this new house and build better? My building career has basically been cemented by this idea. When I went to North Bennett Street, I learned how things have been built 250 years ago and it really primed me to look at the past before I come forward to the future to really understand the best ways to build. What is the best way to build a column with an entablature for a front porch? What is the best window we can put in? What, is, what should siding details look like? I tell clients all the time, in order to win this battle, we've got to fight, okay? Because every sub is going to try to tell you why foam is the best product for your house or why the latest craze, your hand scraped floors or whatever that newfangled thing that they're trying to push is the best thing. And I admit, guys, that there are new products and new things that we're going to put in and we're going to think about. Air conditioning is one, right? Air conditioning wasn't in the houses commonly until the, probably the 50s or 60s. We're gonna talk about some of the products, we're gonna talk about some of the ways to solve new mechanical things that have been brought into the houses and what they should look like. One of the ways we're gonna build better from the past is with my library, right? With all these books that show us great ways to build, that show us examples of the best practices from the last 200 years. So we'll pull out these books on foundations, on framing, on fireplaces, on all the different things, on cabinetry and millwork. We're gonna be taking this library of books, this information from the past and using it so that we can capture that look that we're looking for and so that we can have a house with an old soul. Over the course of this series, guys, we're gonna go look at projects we built and projects we are currently building. And we're gonna use those as examples of what we were thinking, how we ended up with the product that we ended up with. Why did we build it that way? There's a project up in Keller we can go to next, which I'll show you is a Pennsylvania farmhouse. It was meant to look like it came from Pennsylvania. So we went and got the stone from Pennsylvania and I'm gonna show you all the cool things that we did out there to really build and capture this story, this narrative. Because really what you want is you wanna be able to walk up to a house and go, oh wow, I'm intrigued, right? I'm drawn in to this thing. When was this built? What's going on here? I wonder who lived here. I wonder how long this has been here. All of these different things that capture our imagination. Think about when you go to Europe, right? Think about when you're in England or in London or in Paris and you're looking around at all the different things. You're like, when was this built? Who did this? Look at the construction, look at the craftsmanship. That's what we're trying to evoke in our houses. And I hope you guys have fun on this journey with me because we're gonna learn a lot. We're gonna learn from the past. We're gonna practice best things to build in the future. All today, new house, old soul, come join me.
Okay guys, it is possible, right? We did it here. This is a new house, about four or five years old with an old soul, okay? This is a house that has a narrative, it has a story. And we fought really hard on all the details and all the parts and pieces so that there is a clear narrative. You know, part of what I was talking about at the shop, this idea that there's a story, right? That's that narrative I'm talking about. You could almost craft that whole story by looking at this house, right? Here was the original barn. You've got the, the quilted decoration on the side, the stone, the coining, how it was all put together, the windows, they're up a little bit higher right because that's you know cows would have been in that area in those stalls and so there is a way of putting this together so that there is a narrative then this house got added later these appendages were added and so it makes you go you come up to it and you go wonder what happened here wonder what wonder what was going on who lives here right is it is this the original farmhouse for keller right and so it gets you questioned and it's really a time warp in many respects now this house we went to an 11 on detail and you're going to see that when i take you inside because we fought for things and it is a fight right for the cabinets for the inset cabinet doors for the historic appliances right really making sure that when we get the kitchen right or when we get these different rooms that I'll show you that we got the story right. So in this case, we basically said, look, we think this is an 1870s, maybe 1860s story, original stone house that gets added on. And so this piece gets added in maybe, you know, 1890, 1900. We end up with this clear narrative and clear story, but in the Pennsylvania language, right? And so this is, we went to Pennsylvania and actually got this flagstone. One thing that's fun is, that building over there is the building that was on Lone Star Restoration on the History Channel. So you'll see that. But this is really, you know, looking at that building, you know, how old is that? If, that, if, you, if I just took a picture of it and showed it to you, we fought really hard to get all the details right. You know, how old is that building really? That's the whole fun of this whole thing of building a new house with an old soul. My greatest compliment is when people come up and go, how old is your house? You know, what was the remodel that you did? And it's, you know, four years old, they expect it to be a hundred years old. So high compliment for me. All right, before we go inside, there's so many fun details. I got distracted. Let me show you this. One is we worked really hard on the coining, okay? And so if I'm gonna critique myself on the stone, we did okay. We probably could have had a little more slurry or a little more rubble here because we we're going for a rubble stone in the inside with a coining on the outside. And so we worked really hard to get these coin pieces, these cut pieces. Obviously this piece is a piece of granite comes from Pennsylvania. That's that dark piece we we're looking at. Then look what happens here, okay? There's a clear line around here and you see these two windows and this you know third opening here this is a window that got closed in because there's a bathroom on the other side and a closet on the other side so this would have been something that got closed in on the original house again that narrative that story we're going for so just kind of geeky fun details but wanted to show you the kind of the level of detail and the level of narrative we're going after i mean if you've ever been to europe you've ever been to these historic places and you know seen weird things going on the wall you're walking down a hall and all of a sudden there's an exterior window right you're just like what happened here oh this was originally outside that's the kind of charm we're looking to put into houses so one of the other things that you'll see on this house is a hierarchy of porches <laughs> believe it or not so this is the main porch these are the biggest columns you see on that other side a thinner slimmer detail and on, on this side over here off the kitchen, you have a different kind of porch. So each porch was built at a different age. Each porch was built at a different time. We aren't copying details as we go around. This porch is really grand and deep, needs bigger columns to be supported. Those columns are back porches, you know, kitchen porches, you know, side porches. And so they don't require that same kind of detailing. So you're gonna see this hierarchy of porches, which is really fun. Also notice the windows, okay? We've got these double hung windows that are put into a timbered frame, okay? That are more and together. We've actually gone with wavy glass. And so you'll see this historic wavy glass, but look at the different types of windows. We've got these smaller windows. We've got set windows that are in the barn. There is windows built at different times for different purposes by different family members, right? Different generations did this. And so you're seeing a change in how those things are put together, which just adds this layer. And, and that layering that I've talked about is really what you're trying to do, that you visit this house the first time you see it, like, oh, this is charming. And then you come back the fifth time and you're like, oh, look how deep these are. I didn't realize that these would be that deep, right? And so there is this layering that really is one of those details that when you go to an historic house, you really love it because you, you discover new things each time. That's what we're trying to do with this new house, Old Soul. All right, I'm gonna show you three or four rooms inside. The kitchen's awesome, his office, and some of these different rooms that we really went the extra mile, but really turned out wonderful.
Okay guys, so we're inside. This is the stair hall, right? So we wanted it to feel like you're in a farmhouse stair hall. How do you do that? One is we've got this wide plank board, right? To get all of these things, it's like a fight, but you're fighting for details. You're fighting for this look and this charm. And so one, it's white pine and it's boards that are you know 14 inches wide you don't get those at home depot right you have to fight to get these details this stair newel right we went we searched really hard for historic pattern books from the 1880s you know the 1890s looking at what that stair would have looked like notice that the balusters are very this slim right because this is a farmhouse this isn't very fancy this isn't something where they would have spent a ton of money they would have bought something from a catalog most likely at that time and something simple right because it's a farmhouse so there are details we're putting here look at these doors right we we've got thin doors okay these are one inch doors we did that you notice there's a flat panel on this side and then the molding is on this side that is a really old door right so we've got these different doors that are telling the story all of these parts and pieces this wide plank floor the pine floor the fact that we went with eastern white pine we want to tell the story that is done up in the east it isn't longleaf pine because that's a southern wood just little things like this looking down that hall what an interesting perspective right what an interesting thing that draws you down there hey wonder what's going on down there wonder what's ha look at that wood on the wall look at that window what's what's happening and so that kind of detail is alluring, right? And it causes you to want to look at it more. I love this door. We've got a Dutch door. So I can open this door up, right? And so, you know, another kind of farmhouse detail that we wanted to get that authenticity. But you see what I'm doing here? There's like five or six things that we really fought for. The eastern white plank for the floor, the eastern white plank that's wide plank there, the stair detail, the Dutch door, the thickness of that door, right? That we fought for to make sure that this had that old soul. Okay, so we're looking down at that room. You know, why is there a window here in this room? You know, this was a porch that got closed in later. So this was a window that looked out onto a porch. We're, there's the garage, right? We got a plank door in that garage. The client has awesome antiques, as you can see. They got a soap stone sink, which looks unbelievable. So their antiques, along with this story, really create something special. And what's really cool is the kitchen. And so the kitchen was crafted very carefully to make sure that we had this 1940s, 1950s look, right? The, the, it's a transitional piece. Look even at the ceiling. We've got a beadboard ceiling. So all of these things were done for a reason. Every decision that we made was done so that we could tell a story. This kitchen, look at look at some of the, the detailing we went to. This is an O'Keefe and Merritt stove, right? That was restored. That even got painted this color to match the Elmira stove. And look at that old refrigerator, right? So even the appliances that we've gone to are you know meant to tell this story, this 1940s thing. Look at these cabinets, okay? We've got inset doors. We've got the, the, the exposed hinges, right? Remember, everything after 1960 has a different style hinge. The European hinges became very popular. So if we did an over overlay door here we did this you know different kind of detail again this little bit of layering that that would have changed the story and changed the the detail this sink is awesome this is a character defining piece and if you look at old kitchen cabinets there was oftentimes either a curtain in, under a sink like this or this kind of detail to allow for air to breathe underneath your sink so we're now looking right out into the kitchen garden Look at those columns, right? Look at the look at the portions. I was telling you about the that hierarchy of porches, right? This porch is shorter. It's right off the kitchen. It's very different from the other ones. And so again, guys, you're seeing how we're fighting for all these architectural details that you know communicate and tell a story. You need to look at this hutch. A winter tour has this hutch. We were inspired at going to winter tour. We'd actually traveled with this client to winter tour. And that's the original hutch that Henry DuPont saw that inspired him to collect American antiques. So that place is really special and her dishes are awesome in there. We're on the Three Seasons porch and so there's some great details out here. I mean, what a great place to spend time, spend the morning drinking coffee. There's an amazing fireplace with a huge timbered lintel over top holding that fireplace up. You can look at the backside of that thing where there's brick and there's plaster where it looks like it's kind of cracked and aged over time, which is really awesome. And we're now on the back side of the house, right? We see this stone that we saw on the, on the front side. 
look at the sink out here. What's the story with that? You know, wh what's going on? Why was there a sink out here? What th was this space? You know, maybe this was a summer kitchen. Maybe this is something that they used to cook out here originally. As the house grew and, it, and you had these appendages, it kind of got surrounded. And then at one point they just closed it in so they could use it in multiple seasons. So, you know, it's not, you know, this, oh yeah, but it, there, there are clear signs that there was a past, there was a narrative, there was a story here that's interesting, fun, and now who doesn't want to hang out in this space? All right, I got one last space I want to show you. It's his office. We copied a room from Winter Tour, the Gidley room, but it's wacky and cool and awesome. Come check it out. So before we go into this office, which is awesome, you'll again see another porch, right? And then this porch out here, again, different style columns. Those are just chamfered edge columns that are square. Remember the kitchen columns are more Victorian, right? But look at this bathroom. We worked really hard to get the tile right because we wanted this certain age and the tile is an important detail. So a lot of these bathrooms have this mosaic octagonal tile with coloring in them so that we just have this age and this story, right? And again, another detail that we're fighting for to make sure we have this authentic look. Now this is incredible. <laughs> so Winter Tours is the DuPont family home and Henry DuPont in the 1920s started collecting American antiques and rooms. There's 175 rooms at Winter Tour, all from different periods, representing the early 1600s into the you know 1860s, right? And so he has basically the handmade era of American architectural millwork in his building. This is a room from Newport in about 1740 called the Gidley Room. And we have reproduced this room with this high gloss black paint, but we have created a room that is one of a kind. So if you remember the room at Winter Tour, Gidley Room, the back side of it is actually you know rough wood because it was been made by hand at that time. They didn't have big planing mills, right? They would have just shaped the one side. So you've got these raised panels that, that, that sit on the wall. And one of the things that that black paint does is it, picks up and highlights all of these little details. And if you look in the corner and how these engaged pilasters, fluted engaged pilasters with the you know architrave and everything else over and that crazy cornice come together all the way down to here with the pedestal. It's so cool, it's so awesome. And so, you know, one of the other details you'll notice is that we've got different arches here. We've got arches over there that are a little bit different, arches here, arches there. They're all slightly different, okay? So again, that was one of the attributes of Gidley is that you have this mix of different panels and, and details in there that were all special and cool. Okay guys, I hope you understand the, the fight for that old soul. The reason why we do it and the reason we get this outcome is because at each level and each stage, we're fighting for details. You know, getting stone from Pennsylvania so we get that black stone. Getting, you know, the windows right, getting the narrative and the story and creating that story. And, and, and in each step along the way, guys, we are saying, okay, what should this stair hall look like? Okay, remember this is 1870s, 1880s. Okay, let's let's get, you know, let's get millwork books and pattern books. And so you've seen my library, you realize that I'm looking at those all the time to kind of learn and understand the past. Okay, guys, new house, old soul. I hope you like episode one. Join us for episode two. We're going to talk about craftsmanship. We're going to talk about the North Bennett Street School. How how do we get well-crafted things today when everything seems to be on a Walmart budget? So talk more about that time. Hope you enjoyed the first episode, the introduction to a new house, old soul. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching.